Hello, and thank you for watching. My name is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. I'm here to create videos for you to help you understand QuickBooks slightly better than you currently do. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them in the chat box. Thank you. In this video, I want to talk to you about recurring transactions. Recurring transactions are both like they sound and not like they sound. They can be transactions that are recurring, or they just can be transaction templates. So let's zip over and I'll show you where they are. If you go to the right hand side of your screen and select the gear, and then under the header for a list, you go down to recurring transactions. You can see I have a couple of recurring transactions set up. Let me just start by showing you what you can have in here as a recurring transaction. When you click on new in the upper right hand corner, you can see all of the different types of recurring transactions you can set up. I'm absolutely not going to demonstrate each of these. That would take us forever. So let me close this and let me show you an example of a recurring transaction I have set up. I have this one for rent. So I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to click on edit so you can see what it looks like. The recurring transaction in this case is a bill. Let me close it. You can see that it's a bill because it says so right here. So let me go back into it. A bill is a transaction where you say, I'm going to enter money that I owe into QuickBooks. And later when I pay the money, I'll mark that bill as paid. So the template name, this is just the name that I've given it so that I can find it on the list so that I know which one to pick when demonstrating stuff for people. Over to the right, I can identify what type of transaction it is. So scheduled, just like it sounds, I'm saying, hey, QuickBooks, do this on your own, make it magically pop up. A reminder is just one more pop up on your screen. And unscheduled is what I like to think of as a template. So if I know that I'm going to create um, some sort of record and I'm going to do it all the time, I'm going to make a recurring transaction that isn't really recurring and I'm going to make it unscheduled and then I'll have a bunch of placeholders that I can fill in later. Over to the right, I tell QuickBooks, how many days in advance do I want this to magically appear in my books? You might be looking at this and say, well, why would you do this for rent? And the answer is maybe I'm planning and projecting and trying to anticipate my cash flow. Well, I know, right? Like we all know when our rent is due, but imagine if you have half a dozen things that are due throughout the month. Maybe it's just nicer to have QuickBooks say like, hey, I'm just gonna put this in here so that when you look at your numbers, you can plan ahead. Whatever the case, no judgment. You pick your vendor very creatively. My vendor is called Landlord, but you would put in the actual name of your vendor. You would identify the interval. How often do you pay your rent? When do you pay it? And what's the frequency? Is it once a month? Is it once a quarter? What makes the most sense for you? When should it start? When should it stop? The mailing address and the terms. This is a bill. So the bill says, hey, human, you need to pay this thing. And this is going to say when you need to pay it. Do you want to pay it immediately? Do you need a reminder that like, okay, it's, it's like you get the bill in the first, you pay it by the 14th. A good example of something like that is like your phone bill, your utility bill, when you get it in the mail, they say, hey, here's your bill. You need to pay it by X date. They don't say, here's your bill. Stop everything you're doing and pay it right this second. OK, so location and permit, you can skip it. Tags, if you're not familiar, I've got videos on that. And then down here, you can identify if you're going to use category or items. If you're not familiar, I've got videos for that, or we can walk through it one on one. In this example, I'm using category very creatively. My category is rent expense. It's $900. This is all I need to do. I can fill in the rest of it if I want. I can fill in notes or memos if I want. The one thing you cannot do, and I, I don't want you to be disappointed, so I'm just going to tell you right now, is that there's not um, magical placeholders. So you can't like fill in something to have it populate the month. So it won't say like, here's your June rent, here's your July rent. It just, it's not, the software doesn't do that. I know other software does magical stuff like that. Um, this is just not one of them. So there's my template. I'm going to save my template. 
let me show you something different. Um, you, you can make a transaction from scratch by clicking new, selecting the transaction. More often, I usually think about this after I've entered something. And then I think to myself, man, if I could make this into a template, that would save me time. So I'll show you how to do that. We'll go to the magnifying glass just so I can look at my recent transactions. And we'll just, we'll pick the first invoice on the list. We'll get a little creative, mix it up a little bit. Here's an invoice. Uh, I filled it in with all kinds of stuff. Imagine that you looked at this and you said, you know what? I'm creating an invoice like this with this detail all the time. Terrific. You can go to the bottom of your screen and you can click on make recurring. It magically becomes a recurring invoice, which is a recurring transaction. The template name, it's decided my template name is my customer, but I'm going to give it a different name. So I'm going to say um, invoice for invoice for custom, what did I call it? Custom suit. It's not going to be scheduled because I don't know when I'm going to need this. So I'm going to make it unscheduled. I'm not ever going to want to print it. So I'm going to turn that right off. The customer. I don't know if I can not have a customer. We'll see. Uh, so we'll just pretend like none of the rest of it changes. We save template. Oh, we have to have a customer. Um, so I might. What I would do in real life is I would make a customer called temp customer. If I accidentally use this template and create an invoice, I want to know at a glance that it was just a make-believe situation, not a real customer, which is why I wouldn't pick one of my real customers on my list. So I'm going to choose save template. So now when I look at my list of templates, I've got the rent template, which is where the video started. And then I have this invoice for custom suit. If I decide I wanted to use this template, I would just go to the right and select use. It brings up a blank invoice for me. I can change the customer to whatever customer I want. I can modify any of this. For example, the date. I wouldn't have it dated from way back when. I would change the date to today's date. I would customize anything else I wanted to customize. And then I could choose to save it and send it as an email. I can choose to save and close whatever it is that I want to do. I hope this video has been helpful. If my team or I can help you, please don't hesitate to reach out. We offer custom training, outsourced bookkeeping, and self-paced courses. Thank you so much and have a great day.